G'day ladies and gents, and welcome to German Suffering. I feel really bad playing this plane, and I feel really bad saying German Suffering, because no battle rating, no vehicle deserves to suffer at all. It doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't matter who made it, and it does not matter what it has done in the past. If a vehicle is balanced, then everyone has fun. And this thing is the epitome of not balanced. <laughs> it's just... It's just too easy, man. It's just not fair. I've played heaps of this plane. Just to exploit it. And just to show everyone how broken it is. And this particular match is no exception. For me, playing this feels dirty. It does not feel like a fair and balanced plane. And everyone who plays that will agree with me. And everyone who plays against it will also agree with me. Now, I have made a previous video on the F-89D and why I think it's broken and what should be done about it. A, pup a couple of people gave some interesting comments and this was a long, long time ago. Probably 9 or 12 months ago. Close to when it was, when it was added, maybe a patch after. This plane has not changed since, and it's really sad, because this plane could be so much better. I mean, better as in more balanced. It could be healthier for the overall matchmaker. This plane sits at 7.3, which means you can get down tiered to 6.3, and that's exactly where we are today. All the way down at 6.3. This thing can see everything from the Heinkel 162 Volksjäger all the way up to 8.3, to the Yak-30. For me, this particular plane just excels at the weirdest thing. And that just makes it unfair. And that is the fact that it can fire at anyone before they can fire back. What do I mean by this? Well, the rockets, for a start, have more or less unlimited range. There's no real way that you can just run away from this thing, especially in a plane that cannot outturn it. You can't outrun fire. You have to be outside of something like three kilometers to be safe from this thing. To me, that's not really fair, because for most planes, it's about one. Even high tier jets, you're looking at about two. I'm not saying that this thing should face high tier jets. I definitely think it should go up in battle rating to 7.7 .7 or 80. I do think 7.7 .7 is a good one though, because the TU-4 is at the same battle rating. And both of those planes are just as cancerous as each other, and would probably not be a bad matchup. Not only that, but that would reduce the incidences of this plane going up against things like the 262, which it really doesn't deserve to. The 262 is complete food for this plane, and for me, I don't really like that. I think it's unfair. So I'm going to fire a cheeky little rocket and I'm going to get a hit for my efforts, which, all things considered, isn't that bad. This thing has proximity fuse rockets. Yeah. Very balanced. It's fun to play. Don't get me wrong. It is hilariously fun to play and it is also hilariously expensive because you have to buy the F-89B, which is perfectly balanced like all things should be. I'm very glad that everyone got that reference because I would be very concerned if there was a large gap in everyone's, you know, pop culture knowledge. Regardless, this thing is the complete opposite. The F-89B is chunky, it's, it's cumbersome, but it's got guns. And it can climb a little bit, it can turn a little bit, but it, because it's chunky, it's fairly well balanced. This thing is chunky, speedy, and has the firepower to boot. That's not a good combo. In fact, that is the number one way to have an overpowered vehicle. Unfortunately, you have the master combo. So <laughs> I think this thing should definitely be 7.7 or 8.0. Oh. I don't think there is a question about it. I'm also a little bit confused with the radar. Someone someone will know this in the comments below, and I, I implore you to, to let me know. The rockets should have a range of 2 kilometers, if that makes sense. Because the radar 
you know, you know they're radar fused, aren't they? Or radio fused, some, something like that. I would expect the rockets to be tied or slaved to the radar. So you would have to, you know, from what I can, what I can think, actually lock a target with the radar before you get any meaningful damage done. Unlike what I've done here to this Heinkel 162, I've blown his elevators off. Now, we're getting to the one limitation of the F-89D, and that's its speed. However, it's definitely faster than the 262, and it is almost faster than the 229 with better acceleration than the 229. For me, I don't really find that fair, considering that this plane has afterburners. I really, really feel that this plane is so dirty. And we're just going to, you know, I suppose throw away that, that perspective for now and just sit back and enjoy the cancer that unfolds. So, what I'm going to do here is weigh up, basically, who I want to go for. Who do I want to make, uh, you know, make them want to hold J for three seconds in real life? Mm, let's see. This 262 is looking pretty tasty. He's pretty close, and I'm more or less within rocket range, but he pulls a little sneaky on me and does a left-hand turn just before I can get my targeting on. Now, this 262, I'm, you know, passing over the top of him. Very, very smart move, as you can tell. Uh, and so, <laughs> I go for a vertical. The Horton 229 comes in a little bit, so I'm thinking that he was going to go for me, but he does the smart thing and tries to run away. Except, it's not really smart, because I'm still within range of my rockets. This A1A decides he wants to fire at me, but because he's got a smoking engine, he can't really keep up. And I can see that he's on low energy. So what does he do? Commit to a head-on. And that gives me a little bit of an opportunity to nose up and roll over, gaining an even bigger advantage on an already struggling plane. The 262 now decides he wants to go for a straight line, pick up a little bit of that lost speed, and so I, you know, take my chances, go for the rocket, and unfortunately I don't make the first one hit, but with a little bit more luck, and a little bit more spraying, I, uh, yeah, I get him. Yeah, that's another kill. 262, this guy's going out, he's going for a little bit of a horizontal, and then he decides he wants to go vertical. Now, if you want to fight against a uh, an F-89D, that is the number one thing that you do not do. The one thing you do do is you get in, work as a team, and absolutely gangbang the guy. So, yeah, that's not really happening in this match. You can quite easily tell. And I'm about to get myself another kill. Hmm. Spraying rockets. I love it. I get myself a very, very easy kill on a slow 262 that really can't do much else. Four kills, and I don't even have to use my brain. This is the best bit. I just don't have to use my brain. It's... Yeah, and as the 262 says in the chat, pay to win. I totally agree, to be honest. I can't help but agree. 229 is going to be my next victim. I'm looking at him and seeing what he's doing, and hopefully I can anticipate a rocket fire. I don't really get to him in time because he's rolling out of the way, and because this plane is chunky and I fat finger the rocket key, I'm left with no kill and two less rockets, which, you know, could be worse. I could have sprayed the whole lot. But unfortunately for the 229, he decides to go in a straight line to try and escape me and the teammates behind me. So that gives me a very easy opportunity to almost hit an IL-2 and at the same time gain some speed. Because of course I have those afterburners giving me extra acceleration. I can beat the 229 at short distances in a straight line. I get a critical hit and a Horton 229 that has been critically damaged is basically a dead one. So I get my ace very very easily. The last opponent is a 262 going for ground targets. And so, what do I do? Of course, I'm an impatient boy, so I'm going to use an order to figure out where he is. For me, the F-89D is the plane that I want to play if nothing goes right. And previous, well, prior to this, I was trying to play some tanks, and I really, really felt like that chicken in the bowl in the middle of the ocean. 
If you don't know the picture, I'll hopefully put it up on screen. If not, I'll link it in the comments. That's how I feel playing tanks. <laughs> and so, what do I do? To make myself feel better, to give myself an ego boost, I go and jump in the most buttfuck broken plane in the entire game. Do I feel bad about it? A little bit. Did I enjoy it? Yeah. <laughs> you can't help yourself but enjoy this type of plane. It's just too easy not to enjoy. You don't need a brain to play this plane. And that's the sad bit about it. It's just so easy and so broken that you don't really need to think. You just point your rockets and let them fly. And the kills will come your way. You have the performance, you have the weaponry, and of course, you have the, the heavy price tag. <laughs> oh boy, pay to win never looks so juicy. Regardless, I really would like to see this plane fixed. I'd like to see it in a better state, so we don't end up with results like this. Yeah, very fun and balanced. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gents, I apologize for the negativity, but I, I just had to show you this one. It's, you know, something that I do from time to time. Not really a rant type video, but just demonstrating that something needs to be done about this vehicle. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you appreciated. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Maybe we'll write something on the forums. Of course, my Air Models affiliate link is in the description below. So if you'd like to check that out and support me, I would really appreciate that. And of course, until next time, take care and I'll catch you then.